Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Yellow Chair devotional. You know this whole week we've been looking at all the characters and their experiences as Jesus has been arrested and betrayed by Judas, as he's been tried in front of Pilate and Barabbas is released and we know that he goes to the cross, he dies in our place. But we know the rest of the story, right? We know that he defeats death. He conquers. He is our savior. He raises from the tomb. And today's story gives us a glimpse. What was it like for all of the characters during this who didn't know that Jesus was going to raise? They, they buried him. They had a little funeral, right? They didn't know. And so we get a glimpse with today's character and the story into what was going on in the followers of Jesus as they were very confused at this time. So we see here, she's sad, right? She's crying. She looks very confused because Jesus died. But the stone is rolled away from the tomb. What could this mean? And our phrase says, she saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. Do you remember who this is? It's Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene went to Jesus' tomb after he was buried, but his body wasn't there. Jesus came to talk to her, and at first she didn't recognize him. Once Jesus said her name, she knew it was him. He had risen from the dead. Oh man, what a happily ever after for this story, right? So we need to read this together. We are going to be in the book of John, all right? So we've been spending all of these times in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, all right? So make your way with me to John chapter 20. John chapter 20, all right? So we use our guides up at the top and we find our big number 20. And then we are going to start right at the beginning with verse 1. So if you need a little bit more time, pause and, and get there so we can read this together. But when you're ready, here we are in John 20, verse 1. It said, early on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. It was still dark outside. Mary saw that the large stone had been removed from the tomb. So Mary ran to Simon Peter and the other follower, the one Jesus loved. Mary said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they've put him. So Peter and the other follower started out for the tomb and they were both running. But the other follower ran faster than Peter. So the other follower reached the tomb first. Now really quick, who's the other follower? Who wrote this book? What's the title of this book? John. And John has to have a little fun here, doesn't he? The disciples were just like you and me. They're racing and they're a little competitive. And do we see here in verse 4? John even notes that the other follower... I was faster than Peter. I beat him there in our in our race to the tomb. And that just kind of gives us a little bit of the personality of these disciples. And so in verse 5, he bent down and looked in the tomb. He saw the strips of linen cloth lying there, but he did not go in. Then following him came Simon Peter. He went into the tomb and saw the strips of cloth lying there. And he also saw the cloth that had been placed around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up and laid in a different place from the other strips of linen. Then the other follower who had reached the tomb first also went in. He saw and believed. These followers did not yet understand from the scriptures that Jesus must rise from death. So we talk a lot about these strips of cloth, don't we? All these strips of cloth and all of the strips that it sounds like that were around Jesus's body were in one place just laying there. But it says that the cloth that was around Jesus's head, it was folded all up and placed in a different spot. And this is special. This is special because this has something to do with the culture of the Jewish people. Because it was customary, right? Like you've ever been to a really good dinner or you're an adult makes a really good meal or maybe a potluck at church and oh, it's so good. And you want to thank whoever made those awesome cookies or maybe a really delicious casserole or soup or something. And so you say, oh, they were so good. Thank you. Well, in Jesus's time, 
watched one of the ways that they gave their compliments that they said a meal was good, something was good, my compliments to the chef, was they would take the napkin, they would take the cloth, and they would fold it up and leave it on their, by their place. And that was a way of showing, oh, this was so good. And that was just a cultural thing. And so here, we have this little hint that Jesus, do you like making your bed? Or do you just like quick, do a quick job? Jesus here, when he raised from the, from the dead, he took the time to make his bed. He took the cloth that was wrapped around his face and he folded it up and placed it there almost as a way of saying, oh, this is so good. This is so good, my compliments. God, you're amazing. Let's go. Let's go. We have defeated Satan forever. This means the next part of the plan is in motion to save the rest of the world, right? Because from the very beginning, God's plan has always been to save us. And so that's just a little hint we see there. Let's keep reading in verse 10 now. Then the followers went back home. They didn't understand. But Mary stood outside the tomb crying while she was still crying, she bent down and looked inside the tomb and she saw two angels dressed in white. They were sitting where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and one at the feet. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? She answered, they have taken away my Lord. I don't know where they have put him. When Mary said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there but she didn't know that it was Jesus. Oh, I mean, she's crying. She's not seen right. Maybe her hair fell in her face. I mean, maybe she's like dabbing at her eyes. She doesn't understand that this person there is Jesus. And Jesus asked her in verse 15, woman, why are you crying? Whom are you looking for? Mary thought he was the gardener. So she said to him, did you take him away, sir? Tell me where you put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, Mary turned toward Jesus and said in the Jewish language, Rabbani, this means teacher. Jesus said to her, don't hold me. I have not yet gone up to the father, but go to my brothers and tell them, I'm going back to my father and your father. I'm going back to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and said to the followers, I saw the Lord. And she told them what Jesus had said to her. Oh my goodness. Jesus appears to Mary very first. How special, how special Mary is the very first person to see Jesus after he raised from the grave. And one of the things that's interesting is like uh, Peter and John, they were in such a hurry. Sometimes we can be in too much of a hurry and we miss out. We miss out on what God is trying to say to us or show us. They looked in the tomb. They saw stuff. They're like, oh no, someone stole the body. Oh no, what's happening? What's going on? And they left. They ran away. But Mary stayed and she saw what? Not only two angels, but Jesus himself. And I love that Jesus says to her, Mary her name. And then when she hears her name on Jesus's lips, she knows that it's Jesus because no one says her name like Jesus does. Did you know that no one says your name like Jesus does? Oh my goodness. When he says your name, it is filled with so much love and adoration. He's so proud of you. He can't wait to spend all of eternity with you. Oh man, I can't wait to hear Jesus say my name. Oh, how amazing that will be. And so Mary is so excited to see him. And of course she probably wants to hug him and she's a, you know, she's been crying and all these things. And Jesus says, ah, oh, don't hold on to me a whole bunch. I still have to go up. I have to go to the father, but go tell everybody. Oh my goodness, the very pers first person to become almost like an evangelist, right? The good news, Jesus is raised from the grave. Oh, it's Mary. Oh man, he gives her this special job. He wants her to share the good news, the gospel. And so then Mary goes everywhere going, I saw the Lord. And she goes back to all the disciples, to Peter and John and says, guess what? Guess what? He raised from the grave. And she told them what Jesus had said to her. 
oh man, Mary was so special. She was chosen by Jesus to be that special person that he appeared to. He could have appeared to Peter and John, couldn't he? But he chose Mary and he knew Mary's the one that I want sharing my good news. So Mary Magdalene cried when she saw that Jesus was not in the tomb. What does this teach us about her? Oh, she had a deep love for Jesus in her heart. Oh man, she doesn't know what's going on. He's missing. She's crying. Here, Jesus, my friend, my savior has died and now his body is missing. It tells us a lot about how pure and good her heart was. She had those encounters with Jesus. She was changed, right? Oh, and man, and Jesus then chooses her to be the one to go change the lives of everyone else with the good news that he has raised from the grave. So let's say a prayer together and then I'll talk about an activity. Dear God, thank you for Mary Magdalene's story. Thank you for always comforting us when we are sad. And thank you that you want to say our name. And when you say our name, it is filled with so much love and so much adoration. We can't wait to hear it in person, face to face, someday in heaven with you. We love you so much in your name. Amen. All right. At first, Mary thought Jesus was a gardener. Do you grow a garden? Have you helped with a garden? What all grows in a garden? Man, can we make a list? Can we list all the things that maybe grow in a garden? Or maybe, you know, as winter comes and it's kind of cold and it's getting dark really early, it's kind of hard to think about like spring and new life bursting forth. We always celebrate Easter in the spring, right around the time of the Passover and Easter, which celebrates all of Jesus going to the cross and raising from the grave. And that's when gardens, we're planting our gardens, new life is springing forth. So think a little bit about gardening. Maybe start thinking, is there a flower you want to plant? Is there a special vegetable you want to plant? Maybe talk to your adults, see if they're thinking about a garden for next summer. Maybe there's something that you could plant special as a reminder. One of the things that I planted just a few weeks ago was some bulbs, some tulip bulbs and daffodils and alliums, some different bulbs. And you know, you plant them when it's cold and you put this bulb that's all shriveled up and dead looking and you bury it in the ground and it sits there all winter. And it sits and it sits and it sits and then spring comes and what does it do? Oh, it bursts forth with new life. It reminds me of Jesus in the tomb, right? Going into the darkness, but bursting forth with life. All right, so think about a garden. Think about maybe something you could even plant inside this winter and have a windowsill garden, maybe some herbs or something. But gardens are a way for us to remember about the amazing new life that Jesus has for each of us when we believe in him. So have a wonderful time planning your garden, thinking about what could we grow and remembering that Jesus says our name in such a special loving way. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you tomorrow.